Radio interviews. Radio interviews, <laughs> yes. Job interviews, maybe just a, a customer with a complaint. Telephone conversation, the pay rise chat with the boss. Plenty of impromptu situations out there. Toastmasters, to get us to practice, we have sessions called table topics. It's just a topic thrown out there to you that we get you to answer. And in a little while, we're all going to have a go at that. But it can apply to any situation that, that you have, like we've just talked about. So how do you overcome those fears that we've had, the crying, the swearing, <laughs> and answer whatever it is in a better manner? I've got a few little tips here, and there will be a handout, so you don't need to make notes if you want to. And then Susie has already talked about the first important point for an impromptu speech. Listen. Listen to what the person is saying. What is the actual question? What are they actually wanting from you, rather than what you want to tell them? What do they want from you? So if you can listen carefully as well, you can use some of their words in the response. And that's really handy for job interviews and things like that. If, if the boss thinks you're talking their language, you're going to be on board a lot quicker than if you use your own jargon. And it really m makes you a more effective speaker if you've listened to other people. And that's not just the one you're about to have a conversation with, but listening in general to other people people speaking. If people feel listened to, then they're more likely to respond to you. Oh, this person's got my interest at heart. How can I help them? And you can also then comment directly on those issues. So listening, definitely the first important point for impromptu speaking. The second point, pause. There's no need to rush straight in with that answer. Take a moment, collect your thoughts, what am I going to say? A pause is also a lot better than a um or a oh. You look a lot more poised if you just think and then start. So you refresh those thoughts, you get in that frame of mind, and you look a li little bit more collected than the um and ah and people. Next point, confirm. Repeat the question if you, if you need to. Make sure you heard what they meant you to hear. And once you've verbalised that as well, it might become clearer to you as well. Now this, this confirming doesn't always work so well in table topics. I find it a bit of a crutch to just repeat the question because you're only going to get a short question. But in a job interview, in a radio interview, that's a really good question that you want to know about my flooring business, whatever it is. Just so they can say, no, no, I, I didn't ask you about that, I asked you about something else. So confirm back to them that what you heard is correct. Point four, now you get to say something. I've taken four points to get there. Tell, now's your time to tell. Get it out there, what are your ideas? Be enthusiastic about them, but focus on what you want to tell them and what they want to hear. Like stick to the question. How many times, and I did listen to a Julia Gillard interview on the way here, she spoke very well, but I'm pretty sure she didn't answer the question <laughs> that the interviewer asked. She managed to turn it around and, and tell me some other great thing about Tony Abbott. No, I'm quite sure she didn't say that. So stay focused on the question, answer it for what the audience wants to hear. And what happens after the telling? 
What's our fifth point? End! <laughs> Stop talking. There is a point, I know a lot of you here are saying the issue is starting to talk. Some people's issue is stopping. We don't need to hear every fact. We don't need to hear every single point or idea. Stop. And that is why we have timing lines in Toastmasters, so that you get used to a time frame. If you have a two minute interview, get what you need to say in the two minutes, they're going to cut you off anyway. No point having a 10 minute session planned. And have you ever asked someone, how was your day? You just wanted a quick few words. 10 minutes later, you're still hearing them. You need to end, say what you need to say, move on. So that's a great theory. We all can do that. But there are a few strategies for then actually answering the questions. There's the four common ones that work well for table topics and work well for other impromptu situations. The first one is to have an opinion and express that opinion. But not just a rambling off opinion, have some points for why you believe in that particular thing. If, if you hear Julia, when she talks about the Migration Act, she has two points. She has an opinion on why we should go to Malaysia, and this is why, and this is why. She gives us those facts. You could also disagree with it or agree with it, you know, an opinion on something. There's also one called addressing the, the cause and effect. I like that idea because of this. So link the ideas together. If it's a long topic, I'd break it up into pieces. That, thank you for your question. Let's answer the first one here. The Migration Act is good because of blah, blah. But I think it will in affect this because of that link them together. And my favourite one whenever I answer the table topic, and there's not one I haven't been able to answer that doesn't use the past, present and future. Back in the old days, Cairns was a one horse town. Now it's a thriving metropolis. In the future I can see it will have flying cars. Whatever the thing is, link your topic to a past, a present and a future. But the overall strategy is to be confident. If people think you are confident, you will be confident. And as a general rule, and it's not just confined to a Toastmasters, but generally when someone gets up into stage to speak, what do you want for them? You want them to succeed. So people are wanting you to do well. So if you go up there thinking, I can do well, be confident. The audience will believe that you are and it will lift from there. And the other thing is to be sincere. If you, if you have an opinion, express it. If you're not that committed to it, don't just make up stuff. People know that it's... <laughs> people can read through that. So sincerity is important if you're going to answer the question. I know if you go to a couple of Toastmasters meetings and tease some table topics, You'll see people just making up stuff to make up the two minutes. I don't subscribe to that view. Be sincere. You have a real opinion on something. So let's see how we all go with the table topics. I want you to, to listen to the question. Take a breath. Think about what you're going to say. Tell us your opinion on it. <coughs> why you agree or don't agree, your past, present or future, something about it, and then end when you see the light.